The Seahorse Effect by Sierra Steinmarker. Chapter 22. Moving Plots and Perspectives. Bant entered Yoda's meditation chamber, glancing around a bit. It was the first time she'd been in the Grand Master's room, and she was a little nervous. Ah! Glad I am that you have come, said the odd voice, and Bant finally spotted Master Yoda sitting by one of the large windows. She bowed and stepped forward. She said, Thank you for inviting me, Master Yoda. How can I help? The old master quirked a clawed finger in a come-here gesture, and she sat down in front of him. It's kind of first presence I wish to, and then ask some questions I will. All right, that is. She nodded, and Yoda went deep into the force, reaching out toward Bant. What he found made the old master's heart sink. Bant's presence, which had always been lively and bright but soothing, was a dull melancholy gray with strands of bright white and black. Yoda fingered one of the black strands, and a painful grief shot through him. He pulled away out of the meditation, but kept his eyes closed so he could think without interruption. I expected this, I should have. A healer, Night Bant is, seeing much death she has and friends she has lost. And Bant was one of the healers who did not have an apprentice. Now on to the questions. He opened his eyes and gave the Mon Calamari a baleful look. Sounds much sadness, I do. Mourn, do you? She nodded. When I was a field medic, a lot of clones and Jedi died before I could even start healing them, Master Yoda. I'd never seen so much death before. The wrinkled old master nodded. Dealt with this, you did? When I returned to the temple, I didn't have the time or energy for it out there. She repressed the urge to shudder at the memories. How dealt you with those experiences? He asked. I released the emotions into the Force, Master Jedi. She answered as if that was obvious. It was how she'd been taught to deal with emotions, like all Jedi. Yoda was beginning to think that simply releasing the negative emotions was not enough. I do hope you enjoyed your time on Dorsalium, Senator Padme. The young woman looked up and saw Supreme Chancellor Palpatine. We missed your vibrant presence here on Coruscant. Yes, she replied. It was wonderful to get away from the city for a while. He continued to smile at her, and she smiled back. You miss Nabu, don't you? He asked, though it was more of a statement than a question. Perhaps we should return there for a while, after the war is over. Nodding, she agreed. I do miss my family, but I wouldn't want to return so soon. I would still be needed here to rebuild after the conflict is over. She started walking towards the Senate building's entrance, and Palpatine kept pace with her. It had been a long day of debate in the main chamber, and she was ready to go back to her apartment, maybe find a message from Annie waiting for her. He always sent one after she visited to see how she was, and it helped sustain her. But her happy thoughts of her husband were interrupted when Palpatine started talking again. Still, you must miss the planet itself as well. Why else would you constantly go to Dorsilium? The jungles must remind you of the ones in some parts of Naboo. She carefully kept her tone even. I like the privacy more than the scenery. It gives me a chance to clear my head and straighten things out. And it also reminds me why I'm fighting for peace, and sometimes I need that. They were almost at the entrance now. Again, Palpatine spoke. Perhaps I should accompany you sometime if the planet is as tranquil as you say. For some reason, that remark unsettled her. Why was the Supreme Chancellor so interested in her little retreat? He is a friend, yes, but this is unwarranted. Padme was thankful when she saw a speeder and her security crew waiting for her. I'm afraid bringing a guest would defeat the purpose, she said with a laugh as she got into the speeder. Zooming away through traffic, she was unaware of the scowling Sith she left behind. Anakin sat on the living room couch with a data pad on his knees. Jedi usually used mission-free time to study, and with all the packing, cleaning, and other necessities already finished, boredom had driven him to study. Besides, he'd need this skill if anyone other than Padme came to check on him. He certainly wouldn't put it past Obi-Wan to do just that. Sight tricking was the title of this particular text. Scowling, he flipped past the table of contents and started reading the introduction. This kind of mind trick, it seemed, involved placing a force barrier around the object you wanted to hide or change. 
Zen the Jedi creating the shield, him in this case, laced it liberally with a forced suggestion telling anyone looking that they saw only what the Jedi who made the shield wanted them to see. It wouldn't fool electronic devices, but the text claimed it could fool even the most sensitive force user if done correctly. This technique works best, the text claimed, when the one being tricked has no reason to doubt what the shield suggests he or she sees. And again, mull that over. That means that if I wanted to hide my bump, the person I'm hiding it from can't suspect or anything or it won't work as well. That made sense. Well, he mumbled to himself, I might as well try. Flipping the page, he saw the title of the first chapter, Shield Building. Already know how to do that. He turned more pages until he came to the next chapter's heading, Image Crafting. This looks interesting. He read on. Crafting the image is often the most difficult part of this kind of shielding. It has to balance doing what the Jedi doing the technique needs and avoiding suspicion. So choosing the exact image is often difficult. I already know what I want to use. The Jedi muttered impatiently. He skimmed the page and the one after it. Finally, another paragraph caught his eye. Once you've decided what general type of image to use, you need to make it as detailed and unobtrusive as possible. For example, if you are hiding a data pad, do not simply make it a blank data pad, but disguise it as a completely different text, usually one that the average person will find very dull and not worth further examination. If they take no increased interest in the object the Jedi is trying to hide, the shield has a much better chance of succeeding. However, the image should also be as detailed as possible. The more detailed and realistic the image is, the more likely it is to succeed in tricking a person, even when under closer scrutiny. Before going any further in this text, you should learn how to craft a convincing image. All right, he nodded. Anakin headed for the refresher unit. He'd need the mirror in there, and this would take some work. Suddenly he stopped. Was that? He thought before he pressed a hand to the right side of his bump. A jolt went through him as a tiny jab hit his palm. A smile broke out across his face, and he pushed just a bit on the spot where one of the twins had kicked him. Gently this time, the little foot pressed into his hand. He stayed there for a long few seconds, and Anakin's eyes closed in bliss. Finally, he could feel them on the outside. He couldn't wait to tell Padme!